All right, guys, welcome to Fix It Yourself, a series we're doing here at Melbourne Muscular Therapies, teaching you guys how to fix your own pain. Today, we're going to be talking about the glute, okay? So the muscles in the back and side portion of the hip here, okay? So we're talking about glute max, glute med, glute min, and a lot of other smaller muscles uh, known as the big six, okay? So what does your butt do? Your butt is super important. It's an extremely powerful, strong area of the body, okay? It helps us with things like squatting, things like running, things like climbing stairs, climbing. It's just such an important part of the body. And also, it plays a big role in pain though, okay? So if you haven't got a good functioning hip complex, you can be left with a lot of, uh, a lot of pain. Hip pain, hip impingement, sciatica, lower back pain. So it's really important the techniques we're gonna teach you today, do them if you have pain because it will change your life, all right? So let's have a bit of a chat about in depth what we're talking about. So if we look at this muscle chart here, we can see the superficial area of the hip and the deep area of the hip, okay? So on this left-hand side of the chart, you can see the glute max, the most powerful muscle in the body, okay? So you can see how the muscle fibers are coming down in a diagonal fashion here and attaching onto the, uh, to the ITB and the greater trochanter over here, okay? So that muscle in particular is responsible for hip extension. Okay, so during gait, hip extension is really important because as my left leg lands here, what allows me to use the ground force and pull myself forward to there is the glute max, okay? So it's the prime mover of hip extension. It takes me from here to there, all right? Underneath all that though, we have some still very thick muscles, but uh, just not, not as big. So we've got the glute med and the glute min which sit on the lateral portion of the hip, still a little bit more, uh, uh, I guess, posterior, but, but more to the side. And what they're responsible for is hip abduction primarily, okay? A little bit of rotation of the thigh as well, but mainly hip abduction. So that's more of a cutting movement, so taking the leg away from the body. So in terms of human movement, if I'm here, when I go to there, that's hip abduction, okay? So it's that ground force that allows me to be pushed to here, that's the responsibility primarily of those guys to the side of the hip here, okay? As we look a bit further down, we see some smaller, thinner muscles and they're known as the big six. So primarily their role is to rotate the thigh laterally, so externally rotate the thigh. So looking at it in a human movement perspective, their responsibility is to rotate the leg out like that. So in a pivot, we're thinking we're here, we're gonna rotate that left leg out and turn me over here, okay? So primarily their role is to do that. The glute max, which helps us with hip extension, also does that a little bit too. So it helps us rotate that leg out. So we can start to see that this area does a lot of really important things. One of the most important things this area does is stabilization of the hip as well, okay? So when we're running, when we're landing, when we're jumping, just when we're moving in life, even just walking, it stabilizes the hip, okay? So if we think about not having a stable hip or if these muscles aren't firing properly or aren't strong, you can look at when we're landing, our hips are bowing, our knees are caving in, and that's when we can have issues over time arise with our joints, so a lot of joint pain, okay? So if I come over here and look at our skeleton, think about the femur going up into the acetabulum here. This is where all those muscles are attaching to from this ilium and the sacrum into the femur here, and that's a really important joint in the body. How many people watching right now know someone that's had a hip replacement, okay? So it's a really common part of life, unfortunately, but it's because not many people have very good uh, functioning hips, okay? So if our muscles are tight, they're bound up, they're not strong, they're compressed and they're restricted, all of a sudden when we're walking and we're running, instead of the muscles taking the force, all of a sudden this guy, jam, 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 is taking that force over time. And that's why when you see people getting to 40, 50, 60 years of age, their hips worn down so much that they need a replacement, okay? So what I like to see is out there right now, if you've got hip pain, what we're gonna show you today, start to do these releases. See if you can get a bit of a lengthening happening in these tissues. If you can decrease the amount of trigger points in them. If you can disperse some energy in these muscles, that's maybe gonna allow you to improve your human movement, pain-free movement, and actually 
allow this joint to do what it's meant to do properly and not take all the force when you're moving like humans should, okay? What I want to show you as well, before we get into the releases, is a bit more about where these muscles are coming on to attach onto the hip too. So if we see this chart here, different to actually seeing the muscles, but these are actually where the points of attachment are for all these muscles, okay? So you can see the most significant attachment points on the ilium here are B and C, which are the glute min and the glute med, all right? So that, it's a whopper of an attachment point. Like Marcus and I just had a bit of a look at this chart and we couldn't actually believe that the origin of these muscles is so big. It actually looks like a muscle itself, okay? So you guys who know us know that we like working into the origin of muscles because that's where the, the biggest restrictions are. That's where the calcium resides. That's where the crap builds up, okay? So that's what we want to be pushing into. So really important that we note before doing these releases, where these points are, okay? You can see the glute max, that real big powerhouse, attaches to the ilium and the sacrum, that's the pink one up there. And you can see those smaller, uh, big big six muscles, they all attach down to the greater trochanter here, the the uh, on the femur, and attach up to the sacrum up there as well. So just keep that in mind when you are pushing into your own hip, just where you are locating that, that, uh, that pressure. So just another example of where we're looking. We've got the lip of the hip here. So the glute medius and the glute minimus are pretty much attaching all throughout that whole um, big plate of space there. You've got the glute max, which is more up on this top of lip near the lower back, also coming out down onto the sacrum. And you've got all the other big six pretty much coming across as my fingers are standing there, okay? The last thing I wanna show you today is the sciatic nerve. So you've obviously heard of sciatica and why sciatica can result from this uh, hip area here. Check out this, that, that yellow nerve there. That's the sciatic nerve coming out from the sacrum and the, and the nerve roots of the lower back and coming through the glutes. In particular, uh, dissecting and coming really closely to the piriformis, okay? So we can start to see that compressive, tight, shortened tissue in this region could clamp down and inhibit and affect that sciatic nerve, which is why people suffer from sciatica, have that throbbing ache in their leg, um, and it's another reason why you need to be pushing into these spots even more. Okay, I might show you here, Ninja, if you can get a good view of it even more so. Check out this nerve chart here. So you can see the nerves coming out of the lumbar spine, fanning through the sacrum, and then have a look at that sciatic nerve there going all the way down the leg. If it's impacted up there, you're gonna have issues f further down south, okay? So really important that we start to push into these areas. So the people who this might resonate with are people with, that have posterior hip pain. Whenever they're walking, they might have pain at the back of their hip. They might have a hip impingement at the front. They might just always feel the need to be you know, pushing their thumb into these areas, always wanting to get a ball in there or someone to get an elbow in there, okay? You are the type of person right now that needs these releases. So stay tuned, they're coming up. So we'll continue on with our glute video. So pretty important that you move around and you know your own body. So it's like doing all these different things that your glutes do, squatting, you know, bending, rotating, these kind of things. They're, they're all really good measures, but they're also ways that you can actually do some kind of therapy on yourself because movement actually lubricates and gets flow into your joints. So just by doing these kind of movements, it really gets you to understand what's going on in your glutes. So going on from Aaron's little explanation of the body, what we wanna do from now is we wanna to start to um, explore our glutes. So we wanna fine tune into where our skeleton is. So just with your thumbs and fingers, you find your, your sacrum here, and then you start to feel those tendons. You can kind of see they're flicking. So that's kind of information you need to know, like where those tendons start. So this is the glute max. You can sort of see when I push into it, there's a movement over here. So it's showing the, the tendons like that. So it's really important that we get to know where our skeleton is and trace the borders of it. So there, when you start tracing the borders, that's when you start to get to know where these muscles origins are. And then you can start to just move these little bits like this, and then you'll start to understand what their action is as well. So when you can kind of 
shorten it, you'll know that, yeah, that's the movement that it does. Okay, so we keep on going down. So I want to just keep on following down along my sacrum, like that, you can see that. So we just keep on following down. So what this is, we're not going in that deep, we're, we're still, we're starting to warm things up, but we're starting to get gather information, sort of figure out what's sore, what's sort of, what's functioning well. So I've sort of done from here down, so now we can kind of go around the, the pelvis a bit more. So pushing up into these spots, see what they feel like, are they painful? Do you feel like there's a ropey bit going down? So it's sort of, you can just tell when you start doing this that the it's sort of sore down a bit lower as well. So you just start exploring. So you're just doing this reconnaissance thing that Aaron talks about. Okay, there's a really good spot just there. So I know there's a really good tendon there. I can feel there's pain in there. So that's really good information. And you start um, working it, warming it up. Remember there's a spot there for when you're gonna get your, your massage tools out. So it's really important you do your hands on first because there's a double sensation. There's a sensation when you're working on it, the muscle pain, but also how does it feel underneath your thumb or your knuckles or your palms or whatever you're working with. You can feel for this calcification, you can feel temperature, you can feel the, the how bound up and solid it is, things like that. So when you're working with a tool, the tool can't feel anything, but the hand, it can feel, get more information. So it's sort of more kind of power to you, more knowledge. So we're coming round to here. So we're getting to the, getting towards the front where the TFL is now. So you might even kind of be, not even want to do a TFL or hip flexor type of treatment, but you go, well, oh, shit, when you're going around here, you can feel this tightness coming up. So, so that's what we do. We go, we're doing a glute one. So the top of the femur is here. So we want to get into, start at the bottom where those, the bottom glute is. We really push into there. So we can kind of start moving like that. Start getting some information. How's that one? That one's all right on me. So I'll shimmy up, move up a little bit. That one's feeling all right at that level. But at a deeper level, it might be, <laughs> it might be sore. So these ones are feeling all right on me. But I can know that when I get up to the top of here, yeah, that's tight. Okay, so that's the one that I'll kind of keep in my memory bank for when I get the <laughs> the broomstick out later, and we'll be hitting that one really hard like that. Okay, so that's a bit of a, a warm up and a bit of knowledge. But then if you don't have any tools on you. This doesn't mean that you can't do any work. Use your thumb, so you can go along that sacrum again. Knuckle and find where a sore spot is and then lean back. Start to move on it. So this is this feels like a, a treatment you'd go and pay money for. Just in there like that. Get that knuckle in. And then just what I can do, so I'm, I'm managing the weight, the amount of pressure. So I can kind of lift my glutes up off the ground and then I can drop into my knuckles. Oh, yeah. So I can just really feel where those kind of really tight tendons are where they're just stuck and solid and just work them. So you kind of, when you're on a uh, really solid one, you might sense that that's kind of shooting off into your, um, down into your leg bone, into your femur and follow it a bit. So you're here like that and then you go like that a bit and then you might try and shift it out like that. So we just keep on tracing it like that, Find, following the, the sacrum along like that. And then you can do the same for when you're, you're out into here as well. So you, you find your spot. So I know that I've got a spot here. So what I would do, move around and I'd start with my hip like that and then I'd move on to it. I can also do a bit of active kind of stuff as well by moving my leg a little bit. So when I go down like that, that gets really strong, like that. So it's, it's kind of, you're just chasing the pain, chasing the sensations, gathering information, doing all that you can with your hands. You might not have a, a ball or, you know, wooden spoon or whatever it is that you can use. So this, is, this does make a really good start on things. So anyway, so there's some um, ways you can think about uh, to work on yourself, use your own hands, your own thumbs, your knuckles, 
and um, start to discover exactly what's going on. So like what Aaron was saying, like the sciatic nerve, that goes through there. So you might hit on some spots that shoot pain down your leg, shoot pain into your groin, shoot pain up your back even, so or onto your sacrum. So you, you kind of doing all this discovery work and then you can, can kind of go on a journey to figure out where you need to create flow. So, and I've said it before, so you might work on a really sore spot and then you'll, over the next few days, you'll discover that there was another spot that was really tight and sore. It wasn't apparent because it was overwhelming in another area. So that's where you'd target next, okay? So it's like a journey. So you, you do, do the work and then see how you integrate it. So see how the pain is, see how the function is, see how the strength is, and then you go again. But it just takes those three, four, five days sometimes, seven days um, to integrate and then you can treat again. All right guys, so now we're gonna start using our tools. What I've got here today is a pretty pumped up basketball. Um, I really prefer these than just your standard foam roller. Just given the nature of where the actual impact is going into your tissues isn't flat, it's circular. So the actual point of impact is still quite small, but you're still getting a broad release. But I just think it's more effective than using a foam roller, okay? If you are gonna use a foam roller or a roller as such, it's gotta be something super hard, like a cement plug or copper pipe or PVC pipe, okay? So what you're doing first is you've done your hands-on stuff, you know where your sticking points are. Get your basketball, I'm gonna do it on my left glute. And what I want to do is cross my left leg over my right as if I was just sitting on a chair. And now I can just roll around. So just as Ninja told us, we're working into those attachment points. So I'm exploring down the sacrum and I can come up slowly and go further, I guess around the pelvis, the iliac crest. And I can feel, yeah, for, so for me, out the side and further down to where the top of the leg is, the femur comes in like right there. That's a really big sticking point for me. And as soon as I'm on that, I get some referral uh, trigger point type sensation going down my leg. And I can just relate to this as being an area that needs to be, to be softened. So this is just a bit of an accelerated version of what Ninja showed us. This is still a broad release, but we're getting ready for our more uh, sharp and acute type release, getting really deep into the tendon, okay? So we're still just hydrating tissue. What I like about doing this release with the leg crossed is we've actually got a lot of the muscles on stretch. So we're stretching the tissues and we're putting pressure through them. So we're just getting uh, a good elongation, uh, lengthening, and we're just changing the state out of a lot of these hyperactive tissues. So I can just feel right there. I'm just gonna change the way my leg's position. Yeah, so I, yeah, just by shortening it a little bit, I'm able to get a little bit deeper. So you don't have to have the leg up, it's just a, a starting point. So yeah, there it's um, into probably glute med and piriformis. I can just tell there's a bit there as I come up into that glute med tendon, that that's a really good point. Let's come around to the side a little bit more into those uh, hip abductors and just see if there's much there. So, oh, yeah, similar thing, getting stuck into the skeleton right on the tendon. It's getting a good release there. Just doing a few little shimmy movements just to increase that release. Okay, so once we've done our work with our basketball, our big ball, if you've got a hard roller, I'd recommend doing just a little bit of release with this too, just because this is going to get in a lot deeper than the ball. Okay, so similar thing. Let's start with the leg up. And yeah, straight away, I'm just going to take it down a little bit. I can feel that's getting in really, really deep to some other areas that the basketball couldn't hit. So paying attention to keeping that pressure really close to the skeleton. Don't be really in the mid-belly, in the meat of the of the muscle, we're trying to pay close attention to being really close to the skeleton. Yeah, it's really good there. I'm gonna come around to the oh, side a little bit more. Yeah, that's really, really good. The further I go down towards that top of the leg, the better that release is. So let's just go down to those big six external rotators. 
Let's see what they're doing. Couple of little flicks there. So a little bit of hypertonicity in those muscles perhaps. So yeah, just doing more exploration. You can stay on here for longer, but we'll just speed it up for the video's sake, okay? So once you've done the heavy, uh, hard roller, you can progress into some harder balls, okay? So you can see how we're getting sharper and sharper. Let's start with this spiky ball. I'm a bit adverse to using spiky balls because I just think the spikes are a bit pointless and can cause a little bit of uh, um, harm to the skin. So I'm a bit, big fan of lacrosse balls. Um, but when you're working over clothing, it's not too bad, okay? So let's try and pinpoint exactly where I noticed being my sticking points with the roller, which is oh, about there, that's good. That's really good. Oh. That's right on it. So I'm nestled really, really, really closely. I'll get this little chart here for you. I think I'm nestled up really closely in this little nook here. So really close to the bone of the top of the leg there. And you can see how many muscles attach into there. So it's a bit of a nexus point. A lot of things happening there, a lot of intersections, a lot of crossover. So that's probably why I'm getting uh, a lot more sensation and pain in this spot. So yeah, you want to be holding this for as long as you can, doing some breathing, and just sinking into those muscles. You can feel some referral going down the back of the leg, into the, uh, the glute and the hamstring. And I'm just gonna hold that until I release. Now your spots might not be the same as my spots. You might be working more into the sacrum, more into the crest up here. That's okay, you go where you need to go, okay? We're just showing you the, uh, the way you do these releases. So maybe we can go a little bit more around to the side here. Maybe we can lie down like this. See if we can get some lengthening happening in that glute med, in the glute min. Remember we spoke about how significant it is where those muscles are originating from. Oh. So once we've had enough time with our spiky ball. If you want to leave and get a little bit more detailed, you can use the lacrosse ball, okay? So let's get back into the glute min, glute med attachments. Yeah, so that straight away, more than the basketball, more than the roller, and more than the spiky ball, that's found something that I couldn't find before. So it just shows that the sharper the tool, you're gonna to be able to access and find more stuff. Oh, so it's like a sniper instead of a bazooka. You gotta get more detailed. Oh, so that far out, that's fanging straight down the back of my leg, kind of like a sciatica type feeling, but I just know it's productive. Oh, so just doing little small oscillations. I feel like if I come around to the side there, oh, oh man, brutal. But you gotta go through it. If you want things to change, if you want this leg feeling better, if you want to improve your movement, have pain-free movement, you've got to go through these things, okay? So yeah, oh. Just another good example of how a different tool can fit a different piece, a puzzle piece in your body, okay? So stay tuned for Ninja with his good old broomstick. Oh, Ninja. Hi, oh, g'day fellas. How's it going? So yeah, we've got the, going to the next level of sharpness with our, um, our tool. So I've just found a broomstick from uh, from around the house and um, starting to get into things. So I'm going to the top of the femur, so where the glutes kind of attach in there. So for this one, what I needed to do was shorten that. So I've let my leg go out sideways so that muscle shortens and that enables me to get into that. So when I've, I'll show you, when I go like that, see how it's just all wobbly, I can't actually get a purchase. But when I go out like that, then I can kind of hit into things. And then once I'm on, the, on the, the spots, then I can start to do these little movements that help me hit on different aspects of those blocked up muscles. This is blocked up on me in particular, and then I can kind of hit the, the different pain points and just hold it, wait on it until that starts to dissipate. And then I can change an angle and see if there's any more kind of stuckness or pain, um, nerve pain, whatever it is, you can just sort of tell in that area. So once I've done that area, I can kind of go up a bit like that. So that'll scoop it out away. So I can grab the, 
the stick and go up and in like that right through there so i can feel that i'm scooping that in there and then i'm pulling it up and away so i can feel there's another spot up in here so i'll probably get into the lip there and then work down into that spot so what we could do we just sort of systematically work around so from from that one i'm going around the, the head of the femur and i want to go down into towards the next kind of tendon so just there i can feel yeah when i do that i'm hitting on the top of a tendon pushing down on that bit of the stick and then just really hitting on that really kind of painful bit for me just wait there wait for that to dissipate and then we just do the micro movements like that just to try and catch different elements of that same stuck spot so then we can kind of go to the back like that there pushing in so i'm pushing up his back leg and really trying to drive that stick into the spots where it really needs to be released off and i can just sort of do these movements to hit different aspects just really hold it pin it so use your intuition you just know the spots they're good change angles if i do push my butt back and go forward back up a bit down just lean out whoa that really engaged with it there like that so that's that's what you do you go all around their femur so now i want to kind of go into the, the sacrum so it's more of a straight on kind of one like that so the sacrum kind of goes down along that line there. So we want to get into that bit there. And down so I can, I can feel that there's a spot there up. So I push up into that. So I can use my body, move around, change angles, those little bits like that, trying to get the spot. I feel when I go like that, that really helps me hit it. Then I can use this hand here to pull up into it. Wow, that's it there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How fun's this? Just fixing yourself. How empowering. Let's go down. Let's have another look. So I'm going down along towards the my butt crack <laughs> into the next spot. So in here like that. Trying to find the spot. So making sure you've got a good purchase on the spot, you've got a good solid corner of a window or something like that, so it's not gonna slip out. You've gotta stay safe. You can't stay tuned in, stay present, and wait for those different spots to melt. Go to the next little spot, so I can see there's a spot there. See there's a bit of movement in there, so that's sort of indicating to me that there's a good tight spot. So I wanna hold onto that and wait on it drive with his back leg, push right into it, pull into it, ch change it round, really try and work that, that stubborn stuck spot out like that. Move around, explore up and down these little micro movements. They all change the different angle and aspect of the, the force that's going into these different parts of your muscle. So the last bit, I wanna get into the top of the pelvis here. So I'll go downward pressure again. So this could be into a door frame or window frame, something like that. So we want to go into these spots here. So you want the top of the pelvis there, there's a lip. Yeah, I can sense there's a, a tendon there. So again, I want to shorten it like that. So I widen my leg and then pull out like that into it there. And I'm just sensing when I get there, that's on the edge of something. So I know if I go the next little increment, back around, I'm gonna really hook onto something quite painful and important for me to have loosened up. So let's go into it now. Yeah, without hardly any pressure, I can tell that one there's quite painful. So, oh, ah, it's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, whoa. So that's important, this spot here, you can just tell, so yeah. So just keep on moving around, waiting on the spots, being intuitive, and um, yeah, just waiting. Have that patience and just exploring and just that willingness to push into things and go through and um, yeah, wait for it to release off. So the other thing too is um, 
the testing. We probably haven't talked about the testing for a little bit, but yeah, you can work it and test. Where do you feel it now? Okay, so what we want to show is just some other little options. So just from around the house, you might be able to find a stick. You can't tell me you can't find anything. Sticks, sticks are everywhere. So mortar and pestle and just a screwdriver. So let's have a look at how we can potentially get into our glutes with a stick. What would we do? Whoa. So we're just using our body weight, trying to find where our skeleton is. So that's the top of the femur, and we're just trying to work into it. So we can kind of move our leg around that little bit, and just push right into it, like that. Finding those really good spots, holding it, and then waiting, and then shimming onto the next spot. So the same thing with the, your mortar and pestle. So you've got two different ends. If you want to sharp a bit, that, that's a bit there. So we can work onto it right up into the, the spots we want to get into, like that. I want to get into that spot again. Use your body weight, manage the amount of pressure, just by how much weight you kind of allow to come through. And I wanted to show screwdriver. So this is good on carpet or a rug. So get right into there so you can kind of see how that just is a really good tool. Get a good purchase on it and then you can manage how much pressure. So I'm kind of lifting my butt up off the ground and then trying to push into those spots. So you'd really locate the spots where you really wanted to have some pressure and then um, yeah, wait for it to release. And, uh, yeah, good to go. Anyway, I think um, we might have a bit of bonus footage coming up. Bit of uh, Aaron pulling something out of the hat. Bit of bonus footage with my old favourite chair leg here. <laughs> so with glutes, they can often relate to particular dysfunctions. So you might have someone with duck feet, someone with a hip hike, uh, all these different things relating to certain muscles in the glute becoming uh, a lot shorter than others. So the way we can release those is with some specific active releases, okay? So let's have a quick look at um, just some releases we can do on the wall here with the instrument of choice. So we're gonna work particularly into the uh, area of the glute min and the glute med. And what we can do once we've sunk in to a point there, we're happy with the pressure we're putting in, maybe we can start doing some little rotations of the femur there which is gonna shorten and lengthen the tissues around the glute med, glute min, and piriformis. So we can see there that as we're putting pressure into those areas, like I said, we're contracting and lengthening, which is actually giving me a really nice release there. Feels like we're creating a lot more flow, which is really good. We could also play around with some hip hike things. So if we can target a bit more into the glute med itself if I can land something in there and then we can look at maybe once I land it maybe moving that leg out and in to start to really floss that glute min and glute med so just park there whoops park in there there we go that's a good one and let's start to move that leg in and out so we're taking it from an abducted position to an adducted position. So shortening, lengthening, under pressure. Oh, it's a good one. Oh. Getting a bit of activation in the adductors too. So yeah, they're just some things to think about. If you've got a specific dysfunction or dis dysfunctional uh, asymmetrical posture, uh, always look at doing some active release where you're taking that muscle through its full range whilst you've got some pressure applied. G'day guys, it's gonna give you a little bit of a bonus uh, footage for our glute treatment. So this is basically using the skeleton here to show you guys the areas that you're actually uh, getting into with these tools, okay? So we can see that this hip here, imagine the glute is covering this hip. Predominantly, you've got the tendons or the origins starting 
right along these lips here of the iliac crest also coming down into like the i guess the bigger part of this uh uh bowl which is the bone here but they also come and attach around the uh the edge of that crest and also onto the sacrum here and if we use this tool here as the leg bone coming to attach into that acetabulum most of the glute muscles are coming to attach on the top of the leg here okay so Using our tools, we're getting into the origins and the uh, insertions up on the top layer here, but also around the head of the femur there, okay? So the first tool obviously was our hands, but our actual tool was a basketball. So you can see the, the bigger tools were the broader releases, so softening up the whole thing as a, as a whole. So you can see how it fits in there perfectly, okay? You can see as I roll around there, you can see how the contours of the basketball fit really nicely into the shape of that hip there, okay? So we're, we were rolling all the way around, trying to pin different aspects, trying to get right up under the lip there, or maybe a little bit more down onto the top of the leg. Coming all the way around, you can see almost into that TFL region there. You see how those the roundedness of the ball fits perfectly into the roundness of the uh, of the ilium there. So a really cool tool, okay? We also use the cement plug. So you can see here, the roundedness of the cement plug goes right up into these spots, and we were just pulling it down, just trying to create flow throughout that whole hip region there, okay? Probably doesn't fit as well as the basketball, but a really good tool that's softening up that whole area. We also got in there with some uh, smaller, more refined tools. So we got the pestle here. So this was more targeted. So really pinning up into that TFL. Look at that, just fits perfectly. Look at that, under that lip here, just fits perfectly, okay? So peeling it away, getting into the glute mead, the glute min, working the whole way around that ilium, coming into the PSIS, and then we were also coming into the sacrum here too. And if we use this tool as the leg bone, attaching there, we can also be pu pushing straight into the top of the femur there and pinning all those other attachment points. Okay, so the insertions predominantly. All right, we also had our lacrosse ball. So you can see here, look at that, fitting into TFL beautifully, right there, right under the lip. Look at this, just rolls perfectly. Look at that. These rounded objects just fit really, really well. Okay, if we grab this tool again and show the top here, have a look at this, just fits absolutely perfectly right in up there. So this is just to show you guys exactly where you wanna be pinning and making sure that you're not necessarily into the mid belly, we always wanna be close to bone, okay? close to bone. Even if we like from the uh, start of this video, we were able to show you that the glute med and the glute min attach to this whole section here. You don't just want to be out here in, in no man's land. We still want to be pinning the bone all the way up. Okay. So yeah, that's just a bit of an understanding of exactly where you want to be pinning when you're doing your glute work. So we hope that helped. And yeah, let us know how you go. What are you doing, Ninja? <laughs> just working me glutes, bro. Oh yeah. We're doing a video series. Yeah? Teaching kids <laughs> to fix themselves. Oh, bloody ripper. You fucking should watch it. I might. Yeah, when, hey, when's it out? Learn yourself something. When's it out? Ah, uh, next week. <laughs> Couple of days. Couple of days, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. I went, I went to school with that bloke's son. That guy I went to school with, that was his dad. Con the Fruiter. Con the Fruiter. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. matter. I reckon, hop off. Hop away, eh? <laughs> He's a big boy. <laughs> He's fat at the moment. <laughs>